Hello, this is Ricky Dykes with the Scholarship Merit Badge. Scholarship. Many think the word scholarship means only a grant or a payment to support one's education. However, the first definition of scholarship is academic study or achievement or learning of higher level. Therefore, the Scholarship Merit Badge is where scouts must show an improvement in their grades and demonstrate leadership skills. Having great leadership skills prepares one for the future. And isn't that the main idea of scouting? So let's get started. Hopefully you have downloaded and printed off the Scholarship Merit Badge Worksheet. You may write on these and scan them along with any other attachments. You may email information to me at Ricky Dykes, R I D Y K E S six zero at gmail dot com. Please include your parents' email and your Scoutmaster's email for youth protection purposes. Thank you for doing this. I will refer to this throughout the video. Requirement number one for the Scholarship Merit Badge You're to do one of the following options. Option A, show that your school grades have been an average of B or higher, that's an 80% or more, for one term or semester. You can simply scan and send a copy of your current report card. If you have an online report card, you may attach that to any other documents that you send to me. For option B, you're to show that for one term or semester, you have improved your school grades over the previous period. Some of the ways that you can improve your grades are organize your workspace, schedule homework time each day. That's easy to do right now since you're working from home. You're having to set your own schedule. Organize schoolwork by subject. Also, use a pocket organizer to track your academic and your social life. Five, and this is an important one, learn test strategies. Some of those are concentrate on one class at a time. Decide on what's important to study. Study the tough items first. Underline, highlight, and review after you read. And five, most importantly, read over all test instructions. You may choose option A or option B for requirement number one. Requirement number two, you're to do two of the following. We're going to look at A, C, and D options. Let's first take a look at A. You're to make a list of educational places located where you live. This has to be other than schools. After you make that list, choose one of those that you visited or plan on visiting and make a report about how you use the place for self-education. Some of those places include libraries, museums, state archives, historical societies, art galleries, theater productions that you may have been to, book clubs that you're involved with, zoos, festivals, or state fairs. That's option A for requirement two. Requirement two, option C. Using a daily planner, Show your counselor how you keep track of assignments and activities and discuss how you manage your time. You can write a paragraph on this on how you manage your time. Show me a daily schedule, which should be easy at the present time, considering you're having to make your own school schedule. You may download one, or if you have one that you can scan and send, you may do that. That's option C, requirement two. Option D for requirement two says discuss the advantages and disadvantages of the different methods of research available to you for school assignments. We're going to look at two options, the library and the internet. But before we get started, let's look at types of research. How do we know something exists? There are a number of ways of knowing that. One is your sensory experience. This is using your five senses to observe everything around you. Another one could be an agreement with others, using an expert opinion. Then there's simply logic. 
And another method we use is the scientific method, which you're very familiar with in your school setting. Identify a problem, clarify the problem, determine what data would help solve the problem, then organize that data, and then interpret re results. It's important while viewing option D to look at sources while you do your research. A primary search is an original document containing first-hand information about a topic. For instance, it's a description of an event from someone who was there to experience it. Examples may include a personal journal or diary, an autobiography, speeches the person has made, or videos or photos of the person. Ask yourself this question. Was the person telling the account present at the event? For a secondary source, yes. Another source is a secondary source, which contains commentary on a discussion about a primary source. The most important feature of a secondary source is that they offer an interpretation of information gathered from primary sources. It is a description of an event based on research or told by someone who was not there to see it. Some examples may be textbooks, a biography, or informational books. Ask yourself this question about a secondary source. Was the person telling the account present at the event? For a secondary source, the answer would be no. Another part of option D would be looking at the advantages and disadvantages of different methods of research. We're going to look at libraries versus the internet. The advantages to libraries is you have free access to books, periodicals, you have free access to the internet and the librarian's experience. You're able to read magazines and newspapers. However, the disadvantages are there are limited hours, and it's not always open when you need to find something, especially now. Let's look at the internet. The advantages, very fast, it's open to you 24 hours a day, and it provides you with a self-education as you have clearly found out the last couple of two or three weeks. However, the disadvantages are the information can be incorrect. You must always be on your guard while on the internet, and you have to protect your privacy. You can't always believe what you read, so be careful. You have been offered three options, A, C, and D, for requirement number two. Make sure you choose two options. Requirement number three. Get a note from your principal of your school that states that during the past year, your behavior your leadership and your service has been satisfactory. There are two ways that you can do this. You can get your parents or you can scan your current report card if that is in paper form and attach it to the rest of the documents when you send your report into me via email. Or if that is an electronic report card, you can simply download it and attach it to the series of documents. Remember, requirement three, the note from your principal or a designated person from your school needs to report on your behavior at school, your leadership at school, and, the, and your service to your school. Requirement number four offers you two options. You may do one of the following options. For option A, you need to show that you have taken part in an extracurricular activity at school and discuss the benefits of participation and what you learn about the importance of teamwork. You may write a paragraph about this. You may use any school activity, whether it be fine arts or sports, for example, orchestra, band, baseball, football, soccer, basketball. Remember, write a paragraph on what you've learned about teamwork from being in that activity at school. For option B, you are to discuss your participation in a school project during the past semester where you were part of a team. 
you need to tell about the positive contributions you made to the team and the positive contributions you made to the project. This can be a science project. This could be a project working with special needs students. This can also be like a mural that you may have done in your school or any type of project done. While looking at either one of these options, we need to weigh the benefits of the teamwork in your participation of these projects. If you're writing about an extracurricular school activity, you need to include that it builds body strength. You're part of a team. It helps you perform well under pressure. It helps you with decision making. It gives you patience, teaches you how to compromise with each other. And it also provides for good listening and good speaking skills. If you do option B, the team project, you need to write what contributions did you make? How did the group attitude affect your team overall? Remember as you're writing each of these, how have you benefited from joining a group or organization? Remember, choose option A or option B and write a paragraph. Requirement number five, you're to do one of the following options. Option A, write a report of 250, no more than 300 words, about how the education you receive in school will be of value to you in the future and how you will continue to educate yourself in the future. You can use the characteristics of values education below, which is collective identity, critical thinking, cooperation, global vision, and social skills. If you choose option B, you're to also write a report of 250, no more than 300 words, about two careers that interest you and how specific classes and good scholarship in general will help you achieve your career goals. In sending emails, you may send worksheet as an attachment. Please, Add all attachments in one email. Include your parents' email as well as your Scoutmaster's email on any emails that you send to me at ridykes60 at gmail.com. This concludes the Scholarship Merit Badge, but I'd like to leave you with two points. First, remember, your attitude reflects your leadership. And secondly, remember, in all you do, display Scout spirit by living the Scout oath and law to show true scholarship. Or, as Baden-Powell put it, in Scouting, a youth is encouraged to educate himself or herself of being instructed.